Hello Akron fans, and welcome to the last day of the 2012 Christmas Tournament casts. This is Shadow Fury 33 your host, and we will be casting the finals today. Cron Aberrant versus Ferreter. And if Cron Aberrant wins, that is the tournament. If Ferreter wins, then Cron Aberrant and Ferreter go at it once again. So two best of threes in the worst case, or at least the longest case. This was the best case if you like watching this, which I'm sure you do if you're watching this. So, Crown Abbott versus Ferreter, and then, if needed, Crown Abbott versus Ferreter. Let's get started. On Rooftop Showdown. So this map has come up a fair amount in this tournament, probably... Well, nowhere near as much as Hills, but... If not in the tournament, definitely has come up a lot in exhibition matches recently. And it's... Certainly a popular map. It's a bit of a smaller map for its size. It's 320 by 240, but... It's... Got a lot of resources, as I can see, in the center here, and of course the north. South has the more safe natural expansions and some other lucrative expansions as well. Both players are in the west and east. And Ferreter starting out as Grekum. Cronabrin will also likely be playing Grekum. And there it goes, Grekum. So I hope you guys like Grekum Mirrors, because it looks like that is what the next three matches are going to be. Well, well, two, anywhere from two to six matches, really, depending on who wins the first round. Or the first best of three. But this is game one of all of that. So we have right now... Crown Aberrant, he is setting up his Arcticus over to scout out in this little hexagon here. This raised hexagon platform. And other than that, not much is really being shown of his strategy yet. Ferreter, on the other hand, is using his Arcticus to tank, keeping it near his unit so that no early rushes can easily get in. Not sure if he's aware of what Crown Aberrant is playing, but I'm sure he's guessed. Just because he knows Crown Aberrant, I'm sure, by this point. So both players are playing Grekum. So I expect that they'll both be building up quick Octopods and possibly attacking with them, but definitely worried about all-ins, I'm sure. They might, during one of these games, go for walking their triad towards their opponent's base, building a ton of Octos, and just going for an all-in from there. But I don't know if that'll happen in the first game. Crown Hammer is spreading out very thinly. He's throwing Octos everywhere around the map. This is actually not a bad idea, because on a map like this, all-ins are not uncommon, so... Throwing the, his Octos over to the north, Ferreter probably does not expect that. Ferreter is going for his main base only. He is not throwing units around the map. So if Cronenberg throws the units around the map, Ferreter goes and scouts. He sees only one resource processor. He's going to start being scared. I think there's an all-in coming in. Not sure if Ferreter is going to scout this out, though, but if he does, that's probably what he's going to be thinking. That being said, it looks like that wouldn't be entirely inaccurate. The main base only having one triad, and or one... RP, not even a triad, and a main triad going over to the north to grab the lucrative expansion there. So, Cron Aberrant is certainly building a proxy, if nothing else, and very, very thinly spread out, so it's really a matter of if Ferreter can scout this out before it becomes a problem, and Ferreter, not even worried about that, although he is but a minute and a half behind, but he is sending out an Octo to scout, straight into Cron Aberrant's main, and we'll probably see the units as they leave. Cron is about a minute and a half, or a minute now ahead, just getting his triad set up. And that will be... That will be very effective if it's not scouted out too much. Ferreter is... Well, is that... One minute mark. Where is that Octo Scout? He has sent out one Octo Scout. Might be on the red time wave, but I don't see it anywhere on the map. Which leads me to believe that he may not have actually gone for that permanently. It's probably, this is the Octo in question, I would imagine. Let's see, once the red time wave passes along, we see there is an Octo actually coming in here. Not seeing much of anything, not seeing the Arcticus. Not sure why it's over here, because Ferreter is not paying attention to it. And then, like I said, Ferreter has actually gone and aborted that scouting operation entirely. So Ferreter doesn't know what's going on. He has no idea what Cronimer is up to, and he has... Well, he has his main base, kind of nice to set up. He has an Octopod, just in case. But Cron Aberrant appears to be going for the late game in this one. He's building up building up an Octopod for defense, but probably building up just a bunch of resource processors over in this expansion here, and just keeping that. So he's definitely in this for the mid to late game play. Ferreter, on the other hand, has not actually done anything beyond just... Standard economy is main base, though both players have the same amount of RPs. Cron Aberrant having spread his out means he is clearly signaling he wants to go for a large amount of map control in the mid-game, and just hoping that Ferreter doesn't call his bluff. Ferreter, on the other hand, worried more about all-ins. 
keeping his stuff on patrol, so Crownhammer, as long as he doesn't go for an all-in, he should be in great shape. Ferritor's clearly not going out to scout, going out to attack anything soon. So, Ferritor completely unaware of what Crownhammer is up to. And right now, he's probably going to be... Well, he's building up more RP, so he's probably going to be building up a reef within the next couple minutes. Which is a little bit late, given that Crownhammer has a reef up already, actually. The 346 mark is getting a reef up. He has... He has no QPRPs at this point, only LC. Getting another reef up, no f further LCRPs. So both players are sa are even on economy. Ferritor might be slightly ahead, actually, because he hasn't been spreading himself out as much. But both players are fairly even for economy. And Crown Abbott will be getting ahead in tech very quickly. Ferritor's at the three-minute mark. He's He has no scouts going out. He has really nothing coming up to tell him what's going on. Apparently trying to get more Octos, but he's still, like I said, he's kind of on the back foot right now just because of Crown Aberrant's gutsy moves. So Crown Aberrant sending an Octopod around to harass, and that will be extremely damaging for Ferritor if his Octopod is out of position. No Reefs up yet, so he can't really do this stuff for- oh, never mind. There is a Reef coming up actually now at the 320 mark, while Crown Aberrant jumps over to the Unplayable Past Edge, and that's when his Octopod is being built. So he's not going to be attacking from there. He will, however... Well, he's not really doing anything interesting here anyway. Ferritor, however, is going near the present, actually in the future, probably double checking to see if anything's coming up from Crown Aberrant in the meantime, but no, there isn't. He's not macroing anything up either. My only guess is he's checking out his economy on top of that. But he does have a reef coming up. It will be in, up in time for the Octopod attack, so Ferritor will have some defense against this. And getting himself a nice, well, a couple more Seppies, probably, well, one for a reef and then another one for a triad, but he might just be going for a full bubble wrap before even rebuilding his triad. That wouldn't be entirely surprising, and that's exactly what he's doing. While the Octopod, Crownhammer's Octopod will hit right as soon as Ferritor's Octopod's patrol route leads it to intercept. If Crownhammer attacks, but he's not. He is waiting it out, actually. He is not attacking yet. He is, appears to be waiting until the Unplayable Past Edge when this bookmark hits there. And then once that happens, we will see a very powerful attack, and Ferritor actually now behind. Crownhammer now has three RPs, or sorry, three RPs in LC just in this base alone. He has six RPs total. Ferritor only has five. Sorry, a six, but one on QP and one coming up on LC. This is... Well, okay, Ferritor is still actually slightly ahead. I was, I was wrong the first time. He is a bit ahead in economy. But just in terms of overall control, this is clearly in Crown Aberrant's favor. And Ferritor has no idea what's going on. None at all. Completely in the dark on this one. So much so that apparently he doesn't even realize he's in the game. Or, okay, he was almost just getting out of lag, but he's he's fine. There's no concern. And here comes the Octopod. Like I said, a playable pass to edge attack. The Octopod coming in, getting attacking the RP, but it's getting healed too quickly by the Reef for it to be any good. And now the fight with the Octopod. Well, seen this many, many, many times before. An octopod with Reef support will win against just a lone Octopod. Crown Aberrant wisely retreating. Even wiser would be to abort the attack in the first place, but it doesn't look like he's doing so. And Ferritor sending in another Octo for scouting at the five minute mark. Seeing what's going on in the main base, but of course he won't see anything, seeing as the main base is completely unpopulated other than that one resource processor. Not sure if he can hear what's going on in the north base here. He might not be paying attention there. And he is getting advanced structures. Actually, Ferritor is getting tech first before Crown Aberrant does. So Crown Aberrant very focused on economy and... Ferritor will see that Crown Aberrant has nothing in his main base and should start becoming very suspicious right now, really. Seeing no Triad, only one RP, probably will realize that Crown Aberrant is up to something and something is probably going to be the mid base. If there's anywhere on Rooftop Showdown that is of any use, it's this middle base. However, Crown Aberrant has a fair amount of protection. He appears to be actually sending out units Oh, he's accidentally rallied to the Arcticus, but he does mean to have new units be part of the Arcticus hierarchies before they come out. Ferritor now has air units. Ferritor well ahead in tech, getting a Sepipod, and will be very quickly able to probably, well, scout this out, no problem. And Cron Aberrant also putting himself on patrol, just keeping himself safe in his main base, or his new main base, his north base here, because Ferritor well aware of what's going on but does not have a whole lot of time on the timeline from which to counter it. And Crown Aberrant at the 6 minute mark getting advanced structures is a couple minutes later than Ferritor. 
So Ferreter already getting a Sephi Pod up, and if he gets another Keep ERP or two, he can easily start getting Faro Pods up regularly too. And here it looks like Faro and Sepi, so he's going for an expansion duo completely. Or just for an all-round attack force, but probably an expansion duo. Sepi and Faro is typically what they use for. And the Sepi Pod immediately finding that center expansion, seeing what's going on. Crynumber well aware of what's happening, and Ferreter actually also attacking this RP in the main base, just in the unplayable pass, just in case. But main story is in the 752 mark at this expansion here, although neither player is focused on it at the moment. But, looks like, well, Ferreter's clearly not content to think that this is the only expansion that Crynumber has. Checking the south base as well, or south bases as well, to just double check that Crynumber isn't purely in the center. But it is only where he is, so Ferreter is kind of wasting his time, but still being prudent. Octopod coming in with, of course, once again, Reef support, so it's going to be very difficult for, well, impossible, really, for Ferreter to get through. But as a distraction, this is working very well, because Ferreter is throwing up a duo over to the northwest corner of the map. And with that, he will be able to well, expand over here, I suppose, and build some proxies. Not sure if he's aware of the north being taken, though. So if he tries to go there, then Crown will be fully aware of what's going on. And Ferreter also taking out the other RPs around the map, so... He is now calling Cronabron's bluff, but Cronabron had already managed to get himself well established in the center of the map before this happened, so it's not a big deal for him. He has an economic advantage over Ferreter. Ferreter's tech advantage has not paid off quite yet. He has a Sevi Pod that's still alive, went over to the south side of the map on an earlier time wave, and will be coming up to try to deal with this resource processor. Or at least double check for scouting. And it is going to start attacking the RP. Should be able to get rid of it, no problem, but it's really a matter of when that would actually be a problem. Crownhammer is already not getting anything from that. Octo going to the center of the map, fighting with a Faro and a Seppi, will be able to kill them, or at least the Faro, but the Seppi will finish it off before it manages to kill the Seppi. While the Seppi Pod able to get rid of the resource processor and Crownhammer only having this base here in the center, which, while still a lucrative base, he did lose the rest of his map presence everywhere else. But the north side of the map, still his, still solidly his. Ferreter well aware of that. Ferreter now, of course, aware of everywhere that Cronavern is located. And building up a fairly large Octopod army to counter it as well. Or at least to patrol around his base just in case anything happens. Not sure why he isn't going for an attack yet. Or why he isn't going for Faropods at this point and using that to help attack. And it looks like he's continuing on the patrol route. Okay, nothing new has happened here. Cronavern, however, will have to start dealing with this proxy duo over in the northwest corner of the map, and Sebi Pod coming in here, Sebi not fighting it off, Crammer now sending it to do so, but like I said, Ferreter well aware of what's going on, has the capacity to deal with it, though Crammer finally getting air units up a couple minutes later, but to no great harm, Ferreter did not attack with any Faropods early on, so he didn't actually take a huge advantage of his advantage. And Crammer finding the proxy duo, Ferreter isn't really able to do anything with that unfortunately, you might be able to build up some units from it, but only Octos at this point. And actually, might have worked pretty well. He has a lot of resources in the bank. Not a lot of QPRPs. That would be a great thing to build right now. Is more QPRPs. Get himself up enough he can build Seppi Pods, Faro Pods, and just counter away Crown Aberrant's army. But he's not doing so. However, Noctobot is coming up. Seppi has gotten off the ground, so it will be able to take care of the Seppi Pod without too much issue. The Octopod as well up. So Faraday will be able to flank with those. He does not appear to be doing so at this point. Crownhammer, at the same time, will be moving his Arcticus out from that little hexagonal platform and into his main base. But it's taking heavy damage. He doesn't appear to be too focused on actually saving it too much. He had moved a Sebi Pod in to save it, but... Oh, here we go. Ferreter actually attacking... I don't know, I missed this. Ferreter attacking in with Octopods and Octos, attacking the main base and dealing a ton of damage. A far pod up for Crownhammer has gone to Cloak, but... Still, the resource processor is taking a ton of damage, even beyond the reef healing, and the Octopod is just dealing all the damage they can, taking down Crownhammer's economy. This is this is huge. Crownhammer losing all of his RPs in his in this base, or very many of them at least. Not all of them. The Octopod is finally getting destroyed by the Faropod, but still, most of his RPs going down. The Sepipod comes into position to help out. That Faropod is actually that Faropod still would win because the Sepipod is almost dead here. Now Crownhammer getting the Faropods and getting himself back on the front foot. I really am surprised that no Faropods were built from Ferreter when he had the resource advantage, or not the resource, the tech advantage. And, or didn't get more RPs in order to build more Faropods. And Octopod coming into the north base as well. 
as well as Reefs coming in. This is something that Farragher did against Rockmox to great effect in one of his matches against him in the second match, I believe. Expanding with a very quick bubble wrap being built up. However, this Octopod, Cryhammer will be able to deal with this. He has enough Chrono Energy to go back and deal with this. Still losing a lot of his economy. He's His economy advantage has been completely nullified. Farrier now in the lead there. And Farrier having the counters for the Pharaopods as well. This is going to be very difficult to deal with. Dome very quickly dispatching one of the Pharaopods that Cryhammer sent to get rid of this base over to the northwest. So Farrier has a very solid beachhead here, but he doesn't have... He doesn't have any real weaknesses at this point. The only problem is that he has no LC coming in. So at this point, Farrier is a little bit weak in economy, but both players are only gathering Q Plasma, neither of them gathering Liquid Crystal. And Cron Aberrant will be... Well, he's actually slightly behind, because the Seppi Pods, of course, beating Pharaopods handily, meaning that the Pharaopods really can't do much other than very clever hit-and-run edge attacks. If Cron Aberrant times it just right, he'll be able to do a lot of damage, but these Seppi Pods really are dealing all the damage they need to. Farbot's trying to do what they can to some resource processors flying by, but no real effect. Kramer, what you'll need to do is convert his QP to LC, and then from there build up Seppi's to deal with the Seppi Pods, and I guess Octa's deal with the Octopods, because other than that, he doesn't have much. He has no LC coming in. He has a fair amount of QP coming in, but even with that, he's only going to be able to build three or four base class units overall. So he doesn't have a whole lot of money. Farrod, on the other hand has successfully moved his RPs over to LC. His QP RPs in his main base are still good, and the Farpod's dealing very little damage to the RPs flying along to the north side of the map. And of course, he could easily just build a ton of new RPs over there. But Asepi has, of course, stood up from the triad that was there, still getting destroyed by the Asepi Pods, and Farrod not even sending his Octopod in to help attack. Cryhammer has pretty much lost this game. These Farpods are his only real asset, and even those aren't doing him too much... And another Farpod coming in for Ferreter. Ferreter has got it! Cryhammer has surrendered! Well done, Ferreter. So Cryhammer losing the first match, but not the whole match, or well, not the whole best of three completely. So nicely done there. So that is just game one. Game two is going to be a bit tricky, of course, because now it's going to be a matter of Cryhammer really needs to get through this. If he doesn't get through this, he's done. <laughs> if he does, then he has one more shot. And if he wins completely, then he's won the tournament completely. So, second game is going to be on Cold Forged. Naturally, this is very powerful for Grekum, as we've seen before. Grekum works well in this map. Since both players main Grekum, we should see a very interesting match showing how Grekum can really be used, really stand out. Because this map being built for Grekum, well, not necessarily for Grekum, but... Built by Cryhammer, who is a Greco main, and we've seen it before. We've seen Avekir versus CISO on it, which was a bizarre match. You go watch that. I believe it was Electro versus Shalka. No, sorry, Electro versus Shalka was Greco. It was a different matchup. I can't remember the exact players. I do believe Shalka was involved though. Anyway, Greco is. However, we saw Greco here as well, and that one did show off how this map really helps Greco in. In case you're wondering, one of the big things is these north bases here, north and south, a lot of these areas are infantry only, as well as the southeast and northwest. There's a lot of infantry only expansion areas to go to, and Seizo and Vecchio don't have particularly strong infantry, whereas Grekum, all of their ground units other than Octoligos can go along infantry only paths. So a map like this allows for Octopus to just run around without any real concern. And Ferreter very quickly going for a proxy duo right next to this expansion here. Well, Oh, sorry, it was Haiku versus Vermind was the CISO versus Vecchio match, where Haiku ended up forgetting that these comm centers, or didn't forget, or just didn't care, these comm centers provide vision to both players. So Vermind was able to figure out what was going on when Haiku had basically built his entire infrastructure over the, by this comm center without killing it first, and basically won by better information. Now, Ferreter expanding towards the backyard here while sending his duo over to the side, while Cranavern is... Staying in his main base, tanking pretty much a reversal of the last game. The last game, Cryhammer had focused very heavily on expanding around the map, while Ferreter now seems to be setting himself up to spread out. Mind you, Cryhammer did lose that last game, but that wasn't so much because that wasn't so much because of how he had set himself up, but rather because he was behind in tech, and that didn't really help. I mean, Ferreter 
That was an interesting match. Go watch it. <laughs> Go watch when this is done. This should be on the same video in the YouTube video, too. Yeah, Crown pointing out in the chat. He actually, he did get too greedy. He built too many ex RPs, not enough units. RPs being 80 LC each, it's not something you can do lightly. Even in the mid-game when you have a fair bit stronger economy. Anyhow, Ferreter immediately getting into a fight at the two-minute mark with Crown Aberrant. Scouting Octo, finding the backyard expansion. Good on Crown Aberrant for checking that, though I'm sure he's well aware of what it can do. And Ferreter will actually... Oh, he's gonna lose he's gonna lose the Octo. Crabbert just barely surviving with his Octo, able to harass the backyard. Ferder has to be a bit more careful. It's really a matter of who gets the first hit in the Octo versus Octo fights. So it's kind of a bit down to luck almost. So whoever gets the first hit does well. Now Ferder has his duo quite ready next to all these RPs, but sorry, all these crates, put RPs on them, but he still has the comm center or spire to deal with, and he hasn't done so yet. So I'm not sure what he's planning on doing there. Now, Crimer, on the other hand, has... He's jumped back quite a bit, actually. He's, he... Sending out a scout. His Octo is still going the normal path. He doesn't seem to be actually doing much other than trying to get rid of this Spire first. So, he, so Crimer is signaling that he wants to expand these RPs here, but it could also help Ferreter, seeing as Ferreter was going near here. And here is the Octo getting rid of that Spire before he goes along to continue scouting. Or at least was. Crimer actually... Stop that, oddly enough. Not sure why he decided to stop killing that spire. No, apparently a mistake. Anyhow, Crown Aberrant, once that's gone, it will actually give Ferreter a bit of an advantage, but Ferreter not putting his RPs in the backyard expansion quite yet, keeping them away from them, then floating them in later on, so Crown Aberrant's Octo will pass them by completely. However, Crown Aberrant getting rid of that spire has just given Ferreter a nice little opening to build his own RPs. So this is going to be a massive point of contention pretty soon from the looks of it. And yes, even right now, an Octopod being built up by Ferreter. And Cron Aberrant, where is his Octo? Oh, killing off the Comp Center as well, so Cron Aberrant is completely opening up this right side for expansion by either player, but since Ferreter has already established himself a bit closer, it's going to be difficult for Cron Aberrant to take this out. We'll see how he manages to do this. So Cron Aberrant definitely signaling he wants these crates. I guess he expects that Ferreter is going towards the left side, which he is setting his Arcticus there, but that's pretty much for backup, and for command structure, obviously, but mostly for backup. He's otherwise not investing at all in the west side of the map. The east side of the map is entirely where he's focused. And Cronomer's Octo, like I said, because it's focused on the comm center, will not stop the RPs that Ferreter is building and pulling to the back of the map. And Cronabert himself getting a stronger economy, though. He does have, once again, an economic advantage, just like last game. And now he has his Octopod not going very quickly for advanced structures or Spire, but he does have a Reef regardless, which is more than can be said for Ferreter, although Ferreter is about two minutes or about a minute down from Cronabert. So he hasn't had a chance to build a Reef yet. But still, he is a bit behind having to move these RPs along. It does That's a lot of harvesting that is wasted. It's probably about... For three RPs moving along like this, that's... That looks like it's got to have been about a minute, at least a minute's worth of harvesting. Which, yeah, look, if you look at the bars here, it's easily a minute's worth of harvesting. That's... For three RPs like that, that comes down to about 100, 100 some odd LC. That Ferreter is not getting, that Cronabert is. And Cronabert has reinvested into more RPs. So, right now, Cronabert has a massive advantage. And also, opening up this east side, this is the only thing that Ferreter has to really work from, is that he can build up in the east side without Cranamert knowing. He's also sending in some harassment, but that is going to be blocked off by the Arcticus, so that's of no effect. Cranamert patrolling around his main base as he's wont to do, which is a good idea. Not going for the backyard expansion, by the way, so Ferreter could have actually set something up here, but he, he, he chose not to. Which is fine, that's a rather risky move, and even though Ferreter is a head one, and that's a great time to start doing risky experimental strategies, he appears to be trying to just play it safe and go for I know, getting himself actually playing probably too safe he's playing quite defensively get the way he played with his RPs I mean this proxy here it's a little bit experimental but it's not that new but as you can see we do have this R this auto here that manages to kill Cronabert's RP and get out so Cronabert retreating with that octo but Ferritus octo will likely either die or become an RP in the middle of this combat and it looks like we... 
it's hard to call, but yes, it is going in RP, and that RP will be going down very quickly before it even starts to get close to building. Another Octo coming in from Ferreter, but I think at this point, Crime Rat might be suspicious of where Ferreter has left his duo. And Ferreter actually getting an Octopod just in position so he can go for an edge attack from the looks of it, but not actually executing one quite yet. Where is Ferreter's focus? So Ferreter retreating with that one Octo, keeping it alive, and building another one to an RP. The second Octo going to the center of the map, giving itself away, so Crime Rat well aware of where it could be, but I don't think Crime Rat is focused on that quite yet. He doesn't have a lot of units to deal with that. He doesn't have an Octo that could go over and attack, but he's turning them all into RPs, really going heavily for economy. And not at all getting tech, which is unusual. Jumping into the playable past, the just double checking, seeing that the Octo that he had going out has been killed. So the scouting Octo completely killed. Ferreter not sending out his Octopod yet. I think he might be intending to, but he hasn't actually done so. Looking at the order path, probably meant to, but it's not quite going there. He queued at the wrong point. So Ferreter currently not getting that Octopod attack, but he does have more Octo set up. He is going across the visible portion of the map, though, and I don't know... Or I should say he has them queued to the Articus, but he's not actually rallied to the Articus. So he shouldn't be walking through the visible portion of the map. But like I said, he has this entire east side. Cronamert has opened up for him. Cronamert is patrolling around that area, though, setting up Octopods to get rid of that one RP, so he sure as exists. He knows that exists. Ferreter still not paying attention to this one Octopod in the corner here. While Cronamert taking out that, that RP and setting up... Where is his tech? He has a Faro for, for Spire. He does not have advanced structures, though. Not sure why Cronamert is not researching that yet. This RP will be going down... Ferreter's Octo is trying to deal with that, but won't be enough, and Ferreter actually expanding over to this backyard expansion as well. So Ferreter really focused on these infantry-only paths, which, like I said, don't do much against Grekin, being that Octopods can go through them without too much issue. There's a small issue in terms of their size, but not in terms of what they can walk on. And actually managing to save that RP, losing an Octo in the process, but still saving the resource processor, Cronamer well aware of what's going on here, but able to able to get out of here. He's trying to move his Octopod out of there, but it looks like it, it's very close. The Octos have just enough speed. They do get it. That Octopod is dead. So Cranamert losing a lot of resources on that Octopod. I don't think he's aware of the Octopod that Ferreter has up here that's just waiting to attack, but it looks like it might have gone for an unplayable past edge attack. Let's see, where is... So Ferreter setting up his Octos, going towards his Arcticus and taking it out. Probably will be moving past the Arcticus ultimately. There's not a huge reason to attack the Arcticus outright, but no, he is going for it. The Arcticus, however, being moved out of the way, so the Octopus will be able to go through on this iteration and just get straight into the main base. While the Octopod finally attacking, Ferreter going for it, getting rid of this Faro here, and the Faro not even attacking. How bizarre. But Cronarmor setting up Octopods for defense, setting himself up a massive defense force with Octopod Seppies. Well, Seppies probably for Reese, building his bubble wrap up. Yep, there's one, and there another one will be coming very soon. And the Octo's coming in, taking out one of the Octopods. One of the Octopods will go down, or almost going down. It's just retreating out of the way, just enough to get out. But the Octopod here is still taking care of the RPs. All these RPs having to retreat. So Ferreter now starting to get back onto solid economic footing compared to Karn Aberrant. But Ferreter still not dealing a lot of damage. Not able to kill any of the Octopods outright. They will be able to heal up, and losing a bunch of Octos in the process is rather unfortunate for Ferreter, but it looks like Crimer will still have to worry about Ferreter's expansion attempts, because like I said, Ferreter can do this without any concern for being scouted out. And Octopod's still alive, Octo's not even focusing on that, focusing more on the reefs, but this this harassment is still some harassment, but it may not be worth it for the cost. I think Ferreter's wasting money on this, especially now this Octopod has gone exposed not able to kill the RPs in time, really should have been focused on killing the RPs that were still on the ground rather than going for the one that was flying along the air, but I don't think Ferreter was paying attention to that and micromanaging it, which would have been rather difficult for the chrono, chrono energy cost. And the Seppies going over here building some reefs, and from there Ferreter will likely build some advanced tech, but right now Crimer has a major tech advantage potentially, and certainly a major defensive advantage. Getting, getting advanced structures, he will be able to get from here, fairly quickly get up some air units. He has the QB before he can easily build Faropods without much issue. And Octopod army going out, and not sure if he's going to find Ferreter's forces. It is looking through the expansions, double checking where the RPs might be. Probably will go over here next. I don't think he's going to find the duo anytime soon, though. I don't think he expects it to be there. And it's also moving Ferreter, moving it back near the reef for support. 
getting it out of the proxy position while Kron Abert is going... Well... He's going to be getting Arianus, and that's going to be huge. I think Kron Abert pretty much has this game in the bag. Ferritor has himself spread out fairly thin, which could help a bit, but it's just RPs. It's not triads or anything like that, so he doesn't have production spread out thin, which means as soon as Kron Abert finds that duo, it's pretty much over. Or triad, I mean. It's pretty much over. Ferritor will likely do what he can, but... With the Sevi Pod here, Kronomer's going to be scouting that around the map and just double-checking, making sure that all these little nooks and crannies don't have any duos in them. And if he finds them, they are going to be going down far faster than they even came up. Another Sevi Pod coming up, so Kronomer, not yet scouting the Sevi Pods, but does have these Octopods in a good position. Will be able to destroy these RPs that Ferritor had, taking out Ferritor's small economic advantage that he had. But Ferritor getting himself up his own advanced structures in his own bubble wrap with four Reese. We'll be evening out quite quickly with Kronabrin, but Kronabrin still has an economic advantage, so that's going to be huge. And these four Octopods here are going to be able to tear through everything that Ferritor has that they attack right now. And it looks like they are going to be passing through. The Sepi Pods are going on a nice on a nice path to get through this, but Ferritor is... No, Ferritor is not aware of what's going on. And the Sepi Pod... No, the Sepi Pods are actually being sent around the side here to scout out. We'll be finding one of the RPs. And there's another Sepi Pod right here that has not been sent out. But an Octo will be finding this expansion. The Octopods probably... No, the Octopods will not find it. They just barely won't see it. Going up into this base here, and... No, they might actually... Yes, they do! The Octopods do just barely spot it. Right as well go into the backyard expansion. Two of the Octopods are going to be able to destroy Ferritor's economy in his backyard. While an Octo finds the rest of the expansion. And now, Crimer fully aware where Ferritor is. He'll be able to take care of him in no time. And... Not sure if Ferritor's going to be hit by all of the Octopods at once in the back, or if he's just going to have to deal with his expansion being destroyed in the backyard as well. Octo trying to take care of the Fire Pod, but the Fire Pod will be able to heal up too quickly, and Sepi Pods are really what's going to have to use. Cryomart will be able to take care of that with Sepi Pods. An Octopod from Ferritor coming back to harass Oct the expansion that Cryomart had, but it won't be enough. Cryomart really... Cryomart's main concern is that he can't easily get rid of this Fire Pod, but since his backyard expansion here has been heavily damaged, at least help out. I still think Kronomer should probably go for this Reef. He should probably go for the main base. At least then there's less healing. But the Sepi Pod here, trying to get rid of this RP, and it will be able to do so. But this Fire Pod's the biggest concern. If Kronomer can get rid of that Fire Pod, he'll win the game. If not, Ferritor will have a good chance of getting back in. Even though, okay, more Sepi Pods, but still that does allow for a nice defense of this base here. Kronomer doing what he can. Getting rid of the economy, well, it's something. It does help, but... Still, that Fire Pod has been destroyed from the looks of it, or at least scared away. Yeah, I do not see that Fire Pod anywhere. It appears to have been destroyed by the Sepi Pods coming in. Let's double check, though. It looks like... Where is that Fire Pod? I'm sure it's around here somewhere, because... No, it's not. The Sepi Pods actually managed to get rid of it. I thought the Reefs would have been more useful in protecting. Well, apparently not. So, yes, Crown Armor pretty much has this game in the bag. With all the resources he has, he should be building more units. He might be getting Lego class, but he should just be building more units and then working from there. Getting a massive army to tear apart everything that Ferritor has built up. But I think Ferritor will just surrender. He's lost almost all of his RPs. He has only this one base here, which has very little money coming into it to finish that off. And really, Cronomer just has to send his units in the right spot at the right time. If he sends all these Octobots into this base here that Ferritor has, then Ferritor has lost the game completely. It actually will confirm the loss. Until then, though, Ferritor is not likely to surrender. He still has one more chance after this game in order to win, so it's not like this is it. This is game two. Ferritor has won game one, so right now, Ferritor still has one more chance to get back in. And then from there, if he wins, he'll have to beat Crown Aberrant once again. Because Ferritor did come from the loser's bracket. Crown Aberrant has not lost yet. So Ferritor still has a pretty long road ahead of him to win. Even if he does win this round, this best of three. He still has another best of three in order to win the entire tournament. Crown Aberrant, on the other hand, just has to win this best of three. And then that's it. So, let's we'll see what happens. Ferritor surrendering when his base is under attack. And that is game two of three. Because obviously now we have game three, which we'll be going to very shortly. Just gonna get off to that, so... That was certainly... Well, that was certainly a demonstration of what Cold Forge can do.
and why it works well for Grekum, though I'm a bit surprised the proxy didn't do more than it actually did. It 